It's been said that smelling good makes one attractive. But what exactly makes a good smell? Ucha Okorunko takes us to the island of Comoros where the very essence of the scents we wear every day is found. Ever wonder what makes your Chanel No. 5 or Estee Lauder perfume intoxicatingly sweet? Well, that distinctive aroma originates from these yellow blossoms. What has now become a key ingredient in some of the world's most popular scents grows in these dense thickets that litter the Indian Ocean archipelago of the Comoros. This, uh, this kind of plant is from the uh, Philippines, but uh, it's a long time. But uh, it starts using when we colonize by plant. I mean, the, the first plant you came in Comoros called is a, it was a botanic plant. Called, uh, his name is Hembler, who the one who planted it. Okay. And from this time, uh, we start uh, taking to France. When we took our independence, local people start uh, I mean, prepared it, okay. and then we get, uh, uh, I mean, a finance from the uh, European Union to make better, to grow, I mean, the business for the world. Now, Comoros is known as the perfume island because it grows and produces some of the world's most popular scents and spices, such as vanilla. But it really gets its name from one particular plant, this plant right here, the ylang-ylang plant. Now, this is used to create perfumes, essential oils that can be used for aromatherapy and even medicine. Today, over half of the world's supply comes from the three tiny islands of Comoros, and it exports about $1.5 million of the essential oil per year. Though the plant makes up almost a quarter of the archipelago's total export revenues, the crop is grown in small farms. After the flowers are carefully collected, they are sent to nearby distilleries, where traditional wood fire distillers like these extract the essence. We start by extracting the highest quality of the oil, and then continue to extract the lower qualities. I use the money I make to support myself and my family, then put the rest away in a bunk. However, though a 30-liter container of the oil is worth several thousand dollars, local farmers and boilers like McKinney are barely getting by. That's because small-scale essence producers lack the expertise and equipment to maintain high standards. Many, like Makini, make money by selling bottles of essence to tourists. While economists say in order for the flower to become a key source of income and a significant currency earner for the country, there still needs to be a serious reorganization of the sector. Uche Okoronkwa, CGTN, Moroni, Comoros.